in southern Louisiana, down on the bayou, is where hurricanes Gustav and Ike took their worst victims. In between the bayous, or waterways, are narrow strips of land that stretch like fingers out into the Gulf of Mexico. The majority of Native Americans in Louisiana live on these lands. For these tribes, Gustav and Ike are not over yet. They live on in the aftermath and destruction, which the Bayou chiefs say is worse than Katrina in 2005. Going from east to west, the bayous are Bayou Lafouche, Port de Chien, Ile de Jean Charles, Terrebonne, Little Kai, Grand Kai, and Du Large. Three different tribes share these bayous the Port de Chien Indian tribe, the Biloxi Chittima Confederation, and the United Homa Nation. The Port de Chien tribe has 700 enrolled members. Chief Charles Verdin says 300 of them live on the southern point of this bayou. About 50 of them are elders. One band of the Biloxi Chittima Choctaw live on Ile de Jean Charles. Led by Chief Albert Nakin, this band has 650 enrolled members, but many relocated inland after Katrina and Rita in 2005. Only 100 live on de Jean Charles now, including about 25 elders. The Biloxi Chittima Confederation of Muscogees also occupies parts of Bayou Lafouche and Grand Cai du Lac. The United Homa Nation is larger. With 17,000 enrolled members, the Homa enjoy their status as a state recognized tribe. Chief Brenda Robichaud says they've also worked toward federal recognition status for the last 20 years. For any tribe, federal recognition opens the door wider for tribal support and reservation land. Most of the Homa people have purchased the land they occupy, but like the Biloxi, their members are spread across the six bayous. All of these tribes are in the Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes. Both parishes were declared as federal and state disaster areas on September 14 but relief is a tedious process. Before hurricanes Gustav and Ike in September, life was getting back to normal on the bayou. Most homes, but not all, had been repaired or replaced after the ravages of Katrina and Rita. Fishing is the main industry for the Native Americans living here. Although prices for seafood were down, fishermen were still working and supporting their families before the storms. The focus was on family and fishing and faith, but in just 12 short days, almost everything changed. On September 1, Hurricane Gustav roared in like a freight train. Two million people living on the southeastern coast of Louisiana were evacuated ahead of time, including the tribes on the southern bayous. The wind reached 110 miles per hour, making Gustav a Category 2 storm. The chiefs say in a Category 3, their land would be gone. Gustav took with it electricity, phones, toilets, showers, a tribal building. Houses were shredded and turned upside down. Boats and camp boats were blown across the water from one bayou to another. Gustav blew away rooftops, entire homes, and even tombstones. Fortunately, during Gustav, the hurricane levees held up and no flooding occurred. In the five to seven days following Gustav, families made their way back home. In most of the bayou communities, the power and phones were still down. Instead of earning an income, fishermen worked to clear the wreckage and help one another. Any other signs of support were slow to reach these southern points. As these families returned home, they saw entire homes stripped away and some homes completely flattened. Trailers twisted apart, no match for the high wind. Fishing still on hold as boats were tracked down and repaired. Some boats were never found. Eerie front steps that once led to a home now seem to lead to nowhere. 
Mother Nature had set a dramatic stage, and then Hurricane Ike reigned in. Across all six bayous, flooding was the norm. Tribal members say the floodwaters in the southern bayous reached six to eight feet and five to six feet inside the bayou homes. Evacuation notices were broadcast for Ike, but many bayou families missed them. The electricity and phones were still out from Hurricane Gustav, and many families could not afford to evacuate again. The floodwaters of Ike sunk houses, boats, and cars. Some of those unable to evacuate made their way out later. When the waters receded, tribal members returned to a shocking scene. Cars and boats were flung randomly. Sheet metal hung from the treetops. Homes that had already given roofs to Gustav gave everything else to the floods of Ike. Sadly, some tombstones had to be dragged ashore. Families strained to remember where their loved ones were laid to rest and placed the tombstones there. Home after home was destroyed. Families lost all of their worldly possessions, especially those in homes that were low to the ground and not elevated. Hundreds of families and homes were affected. Over 75 Native American families were left homeless. As agencies and insurance companies slowly made their way down the bayous, families learned they had to file separate claims for Gustav and Ike. The recognition set in. Recovery will be slow. Tribal members who had been staying with relatives went back home, if they had a home left. Crew boat captain Freddie Niken moved back into his damaged home on Lower port -Chen. He and his wife Rose had no choice. The floodwaters in their home reached as high as the Red Curtain. Niken told National Relief Charity that he cut a hole in the floor to sweep out the mud and let the water drain. Niken also said, We are not mad. We didn't do anything wrong. Being accustomed to hardship, the attitude was more about moving on. Another elder in Lower Partisan, Noella Hotard, made a similar choice. She moved back home with the help of her brother. The flood line rose halfway up her windows. Chief Charles Verdin estimates that Noella's house has been flooded five to six different times. Noella is just living with the mess. Hurricane Ike hit the lower Portishen on September 13. On October 8, Noella was still waiting for someone to come and assess her damages. In the meantime, Noella was asked to leave everything in her house. She did this, even the wet mattresses, the blackened furniture, and the mold. Mainly, Noella is just happy to still have a home. Hers is one of those homes that was not elevated. Three things are clear for the Native Americans living on these bayous. The people are resilient. The only choice is starting over. Their recovery will be slow. This brings up many misperceptions about disaster relief. People believe that the government will take care of everything, that houses and vehicles and goods will be replaced, that everyone is eligible for these kinds of support, that recovery will be swift and automatic. Some people believe that the worst is immediately after the storm. Ultimately, the belief is that if things are so bad, people can just move somewhere else. None of this is guaranteed.